like to call this meeting to order. First of all, welcome everybody. Um, I'm Tim Face, chair of the CLA Assembly for this year. Um, and we're going to actually start with a item for our assembly members. We need to approve our minutes from the last meeting before we get started with this one. Um, so you should have all received those minutes by email. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as submitted? Thank you, and a second. Michael, thank you. Any discussion or amendments to the minutes? Okay, then all in favor of approving the minutes as submitted, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Okay, very good. And one announcement for assembly members, there is at the back on the table um, a sign-in sheet. Please make sure you just initial next to your name on that. So this is our first meeting of CLA Assembly for this academic year, and it's going to look a little bit different from what we've done in past years. Of course, typically we do have the Dean's State of the College Address, as we do today. In the past, we have had that along with introductions of new faculty, and as most of you probably know, um, that is not happening today. Instead, that was replaced by a reception for new faculty that occurred last week. Um, but we will be having the State of the College as the highlight of our agenda today, followed by a question and answer period with Dean Coleman as well. Um, but then after that, it will be a regular assembly meeting, so there are a couple of items of business that we will have following um, the Dean's um, address and the question and answer period. Um, but we will get right to that, so please help me welcome the Dean of the College of Liberal Arts, John Coleman. I told Joe Allen I'd do something different this year. There you go. Uh, thank you, Tim, and thank all of you for, uh, for joining us this afternoon. Uh, thank you to the members of the Assembly for uh, hosting us here today. As you know, the State of the College Address is our annual occasion for a review of the activities uh, in the college and a discussion of some of the priorities that we have going forward for the current year. Before I get into the details of where we were last year and where we're moving this year, I would like to talk a little bit about something that was on my mind this summer and that I shared some comments with you uh, during the summer about. It's something that speaks directly, uh, I believe, to the importance of the work that we do in the liberal arts, and it takes some pulling back from the day-to-day -day business uh, and some reflection to uh, really understand, I think, what the contributions are of those of us who are involved in the liberal arts. And what I'm referring to is the vital role that I believe we play in the liberal arts in building prosperous, equitable, and democratic societies. And we don't always hear that about the liberal arts. Just as a test yesterday, I googled the phrase, liberal arts are. And the results that Google offered up as completions were not flattering. Yes. <laughs> Worthless and useless were two. There was a vulgarity that I will not repeat. Uh, but it was, not, um, it was not inspiring. It was a bit dispiriting. But in the liberal arts, we are trained. It is our foundational ethic that we should look at things from multiple sides and multiple perspectives. So I tried another test. I Googled... Biology degrees are, engineering degrees are, and business degrees are. The top answers for those, worthless and useless. <laughs> so we're in good company. I hope that makes you feel a little bit better. I said that the vital role of the liberal arts has been on my mind this summer, and I'm sure you can imagine why. It's been inarguably a highly dramatic time. One tragedy on top of another, from Orlando to Nice, Syria, Falcon Heights, Istanbul, Dallas, and yet more over this past week. And in times of conflict like this, it's natural, I think, for individuals and institutions to step back and ask, what can we do? What is our obligation? What do we contribute? The answer in our case is that the liberal arts create the very building blocks 
of healthy and vibrant societies. It's important that we say this, that we state it, that we own it, all of us, not defensively and not on behalf of our own disciplinary or interdisciplinary specialty. Recently, I appeared before a Board of Regents committee, and I was there to share my thoughts on the value and the vital importance of the liberal arts. And I stressed in particular to the committee that a liberal arts education is unique in the way that it builds three things. It builds empathy and compassion. It builds imagination. And it builds community. So how do we build empathy and compassion? So much of what we do in the liberal arts is trying to see the world through others' eyes. People different from me, people in the past, people of other cultures and countries, the artist, the characters in a play or novel, consumers, voters, those facing economic or psychological challenges, people with different political or religious worldviews than my own. Seeing the world through the eyes of others is critical in nearly every occupation, and it is essential to thriving communities. When we see through the eyes of others, we can better question our assumptions, challenge our beliefs, and serve each other. The liberal arts teach us, I believe, to act toward others with compassion, humility, and respect, because we recognize there are multiple ways to look at the world. We see that in our very own college, where we're analyzing things from so many different perspectives, so many different disciplinary and interdisciplinary points of view. We know that none of us have all the answers. How do we build imagination? Our students are encouraged to think creatively, critically, and analytically on questions such as, how do we want to live? What do we value? How do we become our best individually and collectively? What is a productive life? What is beauty? What provides opportunity? What enhances personal freedom? What motivates us and what motivates others? What policies and practices best promote the goals and values we choose to prioritize in our communities and in our democracies? In the liberal arts, our study of the present and the past develops imagination about what is possible and about possible futures. Lastly, how do we build the foundations for healthy communities and democracies? We in the liberal arts directly study how communities and democracies work. We offer insights about individual, group, and collective needs, wants, motivations, and tensions. Insight about what brings us together and what divides us. Insight about how individuals and communities thrive, whether in the realm of education, health, raising families, civic engagement, migration, environmental issues, employment, or the many other areas that we study in the liberal arts. Now, none of this means that in the liberal arts, we all agree on the answers to these various questions and the solutions to the various problems, or indeed that we would even agree on what the key questions are. At our best, in the liberal arts, we genuinely embrace and model diversity of thought and perspective, and we vigorously debate and discuss answers. So when we are asked, why do the liberal arts matter? I believe we can confidently reply that by building empathy and compassion, imagination and communities, the liberal arts encourage the development of vibrant, healthy, prosperous, and equitable societies. This is vital work and it is important work. As we move forward and as we hear the debates about the liberal arts, I would urge us all to look at our work from this broader perspective about what we contribute. And again, not in a defensive tone, but simply as a recognition of what it is that we do. Now, of course, as I was writing this, I knew that to some degree I was preaching to the, uh, to the choir you can't get a much more friendly audience than the CLA assembly and invited guests to talk about the value of the liberal arts. But I do think it's important for us to reflect upon why we do what we do, and I wanted you to know some of the ways that I define our work when I go out and answer questions about the value and the contribution of the liberal arts. And of course, these general comments about the contributions of the liberal arts directly connect to our ongoing and daily work to make the college stronger 
with the CLA roadmap. This is an outstanding college, and we are always looking to become even better. The driving vision in the college's roadmap is to transform the College of Liberal Arts into what we refer to as a destination college. What does that mean? We are determined to have the College of Liberal Arts be on the short list for students across the country and indeed around the world when they are thinking of the preeminent places to earn their degrees. We are determined to have the College of Liberal Arts be widely known for being one of the absolute best locations for faculty to build their careers. We want the College of Liberal Arts to be among the first institutions considered when organizations, agencies, groups, and firms, from the local to the global, are seeking to engage with a higher education partner. And we want our staff to see this as a place where they can be full partners in achieving our mission. The 2015-16 academic year saw some significant progress around our roadmap goals of readiness, research, engagement, and diversity. This year, we'll be launching a website where you'll be able to track those accomplishments in, in more detail. But for now, let me just indicate a few highlights from the past year. In the area of readiness, we've seen great progress over the past year. I've already talked about how the work we do prepares our students to be engaged participants in their communities. So I'll focus my comments here on our efforts this past year to prepare students for the world of work. We have doubled the number of career counselors available to our students. And we've rolled out a new model of providing career services assistance for all of the departments across the college. For the first time, academic advising in the college is at the recommended level of about 300 students per advisor. The college has not been at that level before. Our staff has been busy revising the first year experience class to incorporate more aspects of career readiness into the course and the number of organizations joining us for internship and career fairs continues to grow. The number of first-year students who conduct research with faculty in our freshman research and creative award program has doubled, and I was very pleased that over 70 faculty participated in working with our first-year students. We've also been providing additional funding for unpaid internships to ease that financial burden for our students. This year, we welcomed over 2,500 new first-year students, a little bit above our target, and we will welcome 1,800 transfer students. With the transfer student initiative, we've improved orientation for these students, added two new transfer advisors to our previous staff of one, offered additional slots in the MLK advising community to the, to the transfer students, and this fall, we offered, for the first time ever, a transfer semester experience so that our transfer students have something like what the first year students have to acclimate, acclimate to the college and to the university. We also prepare our students for life after campus with the inventive curricular opportunities that all of you develop. Among others in the past few years are several advanced profici proficiency certificates in languages, a reconfiguration of de degree paths in statistics, to more clearly serve students pursuing an applied path from those pursuing graduate training, a minor in creative writing, and a certificate in technical communication, and attention to a growing interest in health and the growing importance of health in our society with minors in health psychology and public health, a BAMA in health communication, and a new BAMD program. The good news is that the messages that we hear from business, nonprofit, and other leaders is all very supportive of the kind of education we deliver in the liberal arts. I've been extremely heartened by the conversations that I've had, and I know that the team in undergraduate education has had as well. What, we're, what we are trying to do with our readiness efforts is to ensure that when our students graduate, they will be able to articulate with confidence what they've learned, what they can do, and how it would benefit a particular organization. It's not about changing our curriculum, it's about having our students be able to articulate what it is they've gained from that curriculum and what they've gained from their experiential opportunities as well. And I can tell you that all of that is important both to our graduates as well as to their parents. The college also had a busy year when it comes to promoting research and creative excellence. We had an exceptionally active 
faculty recruiting year in 2015-2016, and we look forward to the surge of intellectual energy these new colleagues will bring departments across the arts, humanities, and social sciences. We developed new research support in 2015-2016. The Tali Faculty Research Award annually provides $300,000 of support for associate professors within four years of their receipt of tenure. At the department level, large gifts to the departments of psychology and philosophy were among those that provided resources to assist faculty research and professional activities. And the Human Rights Initiative, initiative joint with the Humphrey School makes available another $140,000 annually for support of faculty research in human rights and complements our new joint master's program in human rights with the Humphrey School. This initiative highlights the college's participation in addressing grand challenges, another one of the themes that we emphasized when we were discussing our roadmap, as does the large number of CLA faculty who participated in the university's grand challenges proposal process across all five of the challenges that were ultimately identified. And lastly, I was pre pleased to be able to announce last year that we had raised the base graduate assistant stipend in CLA by about 14% to improve our competitiveness for top students and, importantly, to ease some of the financial burden faced by our grad students. And through some one-time special funding from the provost office, we were able to offer two years of fellowship support to 14 of our fellowship recipients and half of them took us up on that offer. So seven of the 14 did choose their CLA offer. In the area of engagement, our faculty, staff, departments, and centers took on an impressive range of exciting and important engagement work this past year. Simply getting better at documenting what we do will be a major achievement, and we are working on that day by day. Staff in our college offices and in our departments and centers have been working creatively to improve how we communicate about CLA research, engagement, and other news. These efforts have included the rollout of new websites for CLA units, new departmental newsletters, and a robust social media strategy. Last year, we launched the Big Question series, a joint production with Minnesota Public Radio, to discuss important issues, such as the nature of protest and the achievement gap, from a range of perspectives, including CLA faculty and representatives of off-campus organizations and agencies. We also recently completed the survey of our alums that should provide us with some excellent insight about what we do well and where we can get better. And lastly, we've chartered a CLA community partner engagement work group, which is a, a tongue twister, bringing together the resources in the college that are seeking to engage with external partners. So this includes our people in public engagement, alumni relations, development, and career services. And the idea here is to both simplify the relationship with the college for external partners and to coordinate our efforts so that we all know what we're doing when we are speaking to potential outside partners. Regarding our efforts to build a more diverse and inclusive CLA, we finished our diversity cluster hire of four impressive faculty members with joint appointments in two departments each, and we successfully recruited faculty of color in other searches. One third of the tenured and tenure track faculty hired in CLA in 2015-2016 are faculty of color or American Indian. In addition to the cluster hire, the Riggs Initiative under the leadership of Director Catherine Squires has begun a series of research circles around key areas where we have a critical mass of expertise in the college and across campus. We were also able to give a strong boost to our recruitment of diverse graduate students through enhanced funding to CLA recipients of the university's Dove or Diversity of Views and Experiences fellowships. These enhancements help boost our acceptance rate among Dove recipients to 73% compared to a 54% average the preceding six years. On the undergraduate side, enhanced advising and other services in the MLK program run by the Office of Undergraduate Education has been well received and student interest has been sharply increasing. To provide more opportunity and improve access to CLA, we also offered a record amount of scholarship support for students with financial need in the last academic year. Finally, 
Last year saw the launch of the John, uh, excuse me, the Joan Aldous Innovation Fund to provide small seed grants to faculty and staff across the college to test pilot projects to support our diversity and engagement goals. We awarded about $125,000 uh, across 25 projects, and I look forward to seeing uh, the results of these projects over the next year or two. To improve our ability to succeed in our vision of becoming a destination college and achieving our roadmap goals, we also engaged in a number of operational improvements over the past year, and we asked our governance and other bodies to weigh in on important questions facing the college, such as the length of the tenure clock, the senior project, the college's support for centers, promoting international and global research and teaching in CLA, and our compact request to the university. Our offices of technology and innovation services, institutional advancement, and undergraduate education underwent significant structural changes over the past year. To improve communication and planning with our departments, we altered the portfolio of our associate deans by naming an associate dean for arts and humanities and an associate dean for social sciences. We conducted the first departmental external reviews in many years with reviews of our language departments and our language center. And we introduced a new three-year planning process with departments in the interest of working collaboratively on promoting excellence, achieving our key goals, reducing perceptions of us versus them in the college, and providing departments with a greater degree of certainty over what the near-term future at the very least holds for them, including in the important area of faculty hiring. I was particularly pleased with and encouraged by the quality of the conversations we jointly had uh, with, uh, in the departments and uh, between the college and the departments in the external review and the three-year planning process. Uh, I think the first year of each of these uh, went, uh, by, by, by my reckoning, extraordinarily well. Now, all of these are, I think, impressive achievements, and we have our wonderful faculty and staff in the college to thank for them. I would also like to take a moment to thank all of you who are serving in leadership positions in our departments, our centers, the assembly, on our governance bodies, and in our college offices for making these accomplishments possible. You're doing the hard work to make the roadmap and the vision of the college a reality. As we celebrate the achievements, we are always, of course, focused on aiming even higher. So to advance our roadmap goals, we will pursue a number of new objectives in 2016, 2017, and I'll outline a few of them for you here. To move forward on fostering research and creative excellence, we will develop support for research groups to work on a question or topic for a three-year period. My objective is to fund two of these groups annually so that we ultimately have six groups in operation working on important research and creative questions throughout the college at any one point in time. And we would then cycle in two of these groups each year as two of the groups complete their work. Those of you who are familiar with Mellon's Sawyer Seminar uh, might think of this effort as uh, in that similar family of research support. In 2015-2016, we provided some additional faculty travel support, but we will be exploring options this year for providing more. I would say that expanded travel support is the single most requested research need identified by department chairs uh, and by faculty. And we were happy to make a little bit of progress on that last year. I thank uh, Brent Gustafson for his work on that. And I uh, look forward to us being able to do more uh, for our colleagues over the coming years. I've also asked our new Associate Dean for Research and Graduate Program, Steve Manson, once he has a moment to catch his breath, figure out where the, the, uh, all the offices and files and uh, who he's bumping into in the halls every day are, uh, to begin investigating a major idea that was proposed by our Roadmap Research Goal Team, headed up by Professor Mark Snyder in 2014-15. And this was the idea of a four-week research innovation term for faculty and staff to work on collaborative research projects. 
Now, the proposal's implications are quite wide-ranging the more you think about them, including, not, trivial, trivial, not as a trivial matter, try that, uh, reducing the length of the sem each semester by two weeks. So there are certainly a number of issues that would need to be uh, vetted and discussed uh, to see what we can do, what we're allowed to do, and what the implications would be. In addition to those initiatives that apply across the college, I've also asked Arts and Humanities Associate Dean Anna Paula Ferreira and Associate, Social Sciences Associate Dean Penny Edgel to consider pilot initiatives that might be attractive to the, to the departments in their respective corridors. To continue to establish CLA as a leading institution in promoting student readiness, you'll soon be hearing more from Associate Dean for Undergraduate Education, Gary Olert, about the Career Readiness Pathways Initiative, which is the initiative formerly known and lovably known as Career Bundles back in the day. And this is an idea that was promoted also by our Roadmap Readiness Goal Team, which was chaired by Professor Laura Gurak. The Pathways Initiative is a program that engages students in a four-year conversation, for those who start here as new students, about career readiness. Pathways is framed around core career capabilities, commonly sought by private, public, and nonprofit employers, and it will enable students to reflect, assess, and build their own capabilities through their selection of curricular and co-curricular activities, experiential opportunities, and alumni mentoring, and to better articulate their capabilities and translate them into an employer's context. You'll be hearing much more on this over the coming months. Continued action on our diversity and engagement goals will also be on the college's agenda this year. Two significant steps on, on diversity and inclusion are a cluster search in Islamic studies, as well as the creation of a collegiate diversity and inclusion committee to assess our progress and to identify key issues. The creation of such a committee was a main recommendation of the Roadmap Diversity Goal Team, chaired by Professor Joe Lee. Chief of Staff Katie Lewis and Director of Public Engagement Emilius White have been meeting with governance and other groups in the college to develop the Diversity Committee's role and its activities. On engagement, we will continue to improve our communications to key stakeholders as recommended by the engagement goal team, roadmap engagement goal team that was chaired by Professor Phyllis Mohn. And we will continue to explore collaborative initiatives that mutually benefit CLA faculty, staff, and students, and potential partners. Associate Dean Ferreira is continuing to develop the concept and a plan for the Minnesota Humanities Engagement Hub. Meanwhile, CLA's 150th anniversary is coming up in 2018, and Chief Marketing Officer Scott Meyer is heading up our efforts for a celebration of CLA that will provide a number of opportunities for engagement with our alumni, our friends, and the public generally. All of these initiatives and goals the advance of our roadmap vision to be a destination college, our projects around readiness, research, and creative excellence, diversity, inclusion, and engagement will be enhanced in a big way by our capital campaign. We are right now still in the quiet campaign, of the, uh, the quiet phase of the campaign. Uh, that doesn't mean I can't say anything to you about it, but it does mean that we haven't announced it more broadly to our alumni and our donors uh, as of yet. And as you know, the university is also working on a university level campaign, and so these two will work in concert with each other. Our campaign will launch, along with the universities, in the fall of uh, 2017. But I wanted to share with you some of, the, some of our thoughts about the campaign at this point in time so you can get a better sense of where we are headed with this effort. As I said, the campaign will coincide with the university's campaign as well as with our 150th anniversary. We have a campaign cabinet almost fully in place, and they will meet for the first time in homecoming, at homecoming in October. It's a strong and um, uh, diverse committee in terms of geographical location, uh, when they graduated, their area of focus, and so on. I'm really pleased with the team that we put together on the campaign cabinet. I'm also pleased that we have uh, in place now our Assistant Dean of Development, Mark uh, Baumgartner, who will be leading our efforts for us in this campaign. 
We completed a comprehensive feasibility study during 2015, 2016, and basically that meant I met with a lot of alums and donors. I talked to them about some of our priorities, and we then had, and they gave me feedback and plenty of it, and then we had a consulting firm that's working with the university, uh, interviewed many of these individuals one-on-one, -on -one, either in person or over the phone. Just to ask them more in detail what they thought was working, not working, attractive, unattractive, and so on with the campaign. And it also helped the consultant firm give us a sense of what is a realistic goal for the campaign, though of course uh, we would hope to uh, achieve that and more during the course of the five years that the campaign would run. So for our campaign, we've set a goal of $150 million dollars and we've identified three main areas where we will be seeking funds. First, student readiness. Second, inclusiveness, access, and diversity. And then third, research and innovation. In the area of readiness, we're placing a priority on experiential learning scholarships that will allow more students to access the life-changing experiences of study abroad, service learning, internships, and undergraduate research opportunities. We are also seeking support for an internship program for humanities PhD students. The second category is inclusiveness, access, and diversity. CLA is already home to the highest percentage of students from diverse walks of life at the U. Fully one-third of our undergraduates are the first in their families to attend college, and transfer students make up 40% of the college's undergraduate population. But we know we can do better in supporting these students. Much needed scholarships will help ensure the access and success of students who may require the support of additional resources to successfully navigate the university, excel in their, athletic, excuse me, in their academics, and participate in campus life, whether that's through athletics, through clubs, through other kinds of areas that they are involved in. Diversity of thought and perspective is the very bedrock of what makes the liberal arts what they are. Thus, we'll also seek funds to attract a more diverse faculty through research support and endowed funding. The third and largest category of our campaign is research and innovation. And I will say this is a bit of a bold move on our part because this is also traditionally the most difficult area in which to raise funds from alums and donors and friends. But we're resting the case for CLA on the importance of the research enterprise, that this is a research liberal arts college and a research university. And it's something we need to advertise to our alums, friends, and donors. It's something we need to emphasize in the life of the college and it's something that we need to communicate to all of the stakeholders who we work with. Funding in this category includes endowed faculty positions, graduate funding, funds to launch new projects and support ongoing interdisciplinary efforts, and funds to respond to short-term, real-time opportunities. We expect that these funds will encourage innovation and scholarship, attain excuse me, uh, attract and retain top faculty and graduate students and create the kind of supportic, supportive, dynamic, and intellectually exciting environment for research and creative work that is called for in the CLA roadmap. Ultimately, the success of the roadmap, I believe, will depend in large part on attractive, attracting and retaining the absolute best faculty that we can to the college. So we're putting a big effort on the support of research in innovation, uh, as I say, it's a bit of a bold move. Um, I'm prepared to work it hard, and we'll be uh, calling on many of you to help us in this, uh, in this effort as well, as you can be more persuasive uh, than I can in many cases. The campaign will make it possible for CLA to expand on the tremendous work that you already do. Now, at the same time that we're asking others to invest in us, we have to continue to make decisions that demonstrate that we are using our resources well. 
That means investing, but in a tight fiscal environment, it also means reallocating or cutting, where prudent and called for, and prioritizing our highest needs, both across the college as well as within all of our individual units. It means making every hire and every promotion and retention decision count. It means great mentorship of junior faculty and graduate students. It means being creative in how we deliver our cu curriculum where it will be pedagogically sensible to do so. It means re-examining areas of our budget process to learn what we can do better and how we can serve our departments and our units better. Our ability to invest is ultimately driven most heavily by tuition revenue. So being responsible stewards of our resources also means continuing to develop the kind of inventive new curriculum that I mentioned before that meets the needs and interests of today's students and leverages the particular areas of strength that we have in the college and areas where we have strength that we can tap into across campus. So what I've outlined today, everything from our accomplishments of the last year to our hopes, goals, and plans for the future, speak directly to what I started off talking about, the contributions of the liberal arts in challenging times. Our work in the liberal arts, as I said at the outset, offers hope, understanding, and perspective. Our work in the liberal arts intersects with the major issues and questions confronting us individually and collectively. Our work in the liberal arts asks the difficult questions. Our work in the liberal arts prepares our students to be active participants in their communities and to thrive in their careers. As the home of the humanities, arts, and social sciences at the university, it is our job to analyze disparities and conflicts, to place them in historical, economic, and social context. It is our job to bring a wide array of disciplinary and interdisciplinary approaches to bear on important questions. It is our job to explore people's confusion, understand their sorrow and their hopes, and to provide our insight on how individuals and communities thrive. Thank you to all of our faculty and staff for what you do through your mentoring and instruction, your scholarship and creative work, and your service and leadership. It is your work that will produce the graduates, research, and partnerships that will have a positive impact on society and will make CLA a destination college. In CLA, we have plenty to be proud about, and we should always be, always be, in a position of advocating for and not apologizing for the liberal arts. Thank you all once again for coming. I look forward to continuing our work together, and I'd be happy to take some questions. Thank you. <laughs>